are you guys are seeing us again in the same outfits because we're taping at least four in a row because our schedules are not always together but we love talking about stuff and so you guys are getting a peek into our conversations that we talk about here as coaches but also just as humans and and women and just really being able to look at the world and so sherry and i you know first off welcome to uh, yes welcome to the coach's Coach's corner Corner. sorry (laughs) sorry (laughs) sherry and i were talking r kelly or surviving r kelly yes and we have so many conversations about it but we are not going to try to um give it to you all in 10 minutes we are going to first just talk to you about what we felt was one of or sherry's going to talk to you about one of the points that she felt was really, I guess, pressing. Yeah. And also brought up some stuff for her because how people responded and how people are responding because I felt very strongly about it as well. And I'm just going to kind of let Sherry. So (laughs) as of the time of this video, I have not yet seen any of the episodes. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to say is that if it um, (laughs) is not going to be conducive to your own emotional wellness, don't watch it. Even though everyone is talking about it, if you have experienced any type of abuse and that those um, episodes are going to be a trigger to you and just not have you in a good space mentally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, just don't watch it. Um, You can definitely get all the highlights online, which I have gotten. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, And I can tell you that, yes, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, especially Twitter. Black Twitter will let you know what's up. I love Black Twitter. (laughs) Um, But the thing that really bothered me the most about the post that I was seeing from some people that were really surprising um, is that on my Facebook timeline was like the worst, where individuals um, were going and really... um, making comments that were very insensitive was saying, well, if this person was abused, they shouldn't act like that. And mm-hmm. even when you looked at the post, the comments in the post, they were even worse, just seeing just what people were saying. Um, and the thing that I really wanted to take this time out to talk in this video is that you cannot dictate how someone will act when they are abused. The whole purpose of someone getting support after going through abuse is because their mindset, their perspective, their ability to be able to ascertain just what's happening around them, to have relationships um, that are not uh, problematic, they need help just recalibrating. And so abuse throws off all of your senses, your um, emotions, how you view the world, your perspective, what you accept and what you don't. Mm -hmm. You know, your boundaries are just completely altered by that. And so what we deem as logic as someone who is not being abused um, is that you can't put those same expectations on someone who has been abused. So I know, for instance, with um, R. Kelly's ex-wife, there's been this whole issue about the fact that this video from two years ago that she posted, you know, listening to the song, jamming to a song by R. Kelly with her um, boyfriend at the time or, you know, I'm not sure what he was, but his, her other significant other. Oh, I haven't seen that. Okay. Yeah, you know, with it. And so she's, you know, listening to R. Kelly's man. She's talking about how great of an entertainer he is and he can sing and, you know, that's still her baby daddy, you know, and things of that nature. Um, it's that now people are discounting the experiences of abuse that she states that she experienced when she was married to him simply because she's listening. separate issues? They are completely <laughs> separate. <laughs> Is that, you know, with it, um, this was, regardless of the fact that the um, abuse happened, this was still someone she literally had children with. Think about the level of intimacy and Mm -hmm. connection that you have with someone to birth children, to produce children. And so think about what even had to happen for her emotionally and mentally to even be attracted to R. Kelly, to then be in a relationship with with him and to be married. So, you know, with it, there had to be some elements of positivity, whether they were far and few in between, that drew her in and that kept her there. And then when she started experiencing the abuse, now everything just gets warped. And so as people who are seeing this, we should not discount someone's experience of abuse and pain and abandonment and neglect simply because they are not responding in a way that we deem logical. It wasn't logical for them to be abused and so we can't expect there to be pure logic in how they now respond to that abuse, especially when they haven't been properly supported. And who tells anyone how to respond to abuse? Right. Because it's funny or interesting, I should say not funny, it's interesting how everyone has an opinion about something that they participate in oftentimes with other people just under a different title. (laughs) And so 
you know, I'm not saying everyone is abused or has unhealthy relationships, but I am saying that you could have the same type of emotional or neglect in your relationship with your parents. You can have mm -hmm. the same kind of relationship with your spouse. You can have multiple types of abuse that you participate in differently because of your experience in the world as a child or in your developmental time. The other thing is, I hope, you know, like, first off, if you didn't see it, I think you really should probably not talk about her direct issue or if you weren't there while she was experiencing the abuse, you can't tell her how she should be responding now because you don't know the work that she's done to be in the position she is to even have a voice, to even say her story or to share her story. And so for me, I'm, I'm wondering why people feel it's important to attack the survivor of domestic violence or of abuse because there's other elements of abuse there's assaults there are all kinds of things that happen to her as his spouse if we just mm -hmm. took her if, i mean forget the fact that there's layers to the abuse that was going on and even just the level of uh, types of abuse that were going on mm -hmm. but even if we just took her situation her captivity and her imprisonment to that abuse also structured her time, her mind, and her freedom when she got out. So how she responds, none of us know. How right. you are expected to respond versus how she may respond are two different things. You can have an expectation that, oh, now that you're out, you're better. But the reality is you don't know what it feels like to even be out of something that she had been part of for years and had children mm -hmm. with this man and has physical markers that say, I will always be a part of this man's life no matter what. And so if she's jamming to a song, that's on her and her own work that she has to do. But that doesn't discount what he did to her in the time frame he right. did it. It doesn't discount if she's, quote unquote, the right type of victim. Because that in itself is a problem to me. Yes. The fact that you could only present one way for me to be able to say that I've been abused or hurt. The reality is that I could be, quote unquote, very strong, be a woman who is very independent, has taken care of herself for years and right. be in a domestic violence situation. Right. To say that you automatically have to look a certain way for me to feel like you're a victim. I mean, I can go on and on about some of the stuff that people said within that, um, just in general within there about black women specifically because we also going to have to cap that on top of it because some of this is cultural. Let's not right. play this game anymore where it's not just, a, it's also about the fact that we are, we are quick to, to name names when it comes to black women and call them fast or slick or this or that. And she should hot in the pants, she, hot in the pants or she was down for it when it was, when she got something out of it. But the reality is you, nothing she got out of it should have cost her what she had to pay. Period. Absolutely. And so you could tell me a million different ways at a million different times, but you can go ahead and save that. And I don't, and I will go off my soapbox because <laughs> that's why I didn't want to talk about this one. Because there was one thing that I saw that really in that same kind of like tone mm -hmm. that came out about somebody saying something about, um, they're doing this to him as a black man. And I'm like, so he didn't do this to us as black women? Right. These little girls, those faces across, they're all brown. These are all our children and our daughters. And you trying to tell me that I'm supposed to be a hero in the background for him, but I can't be the same person and angry and upset and disgusted at some of the behavior that he did to women and, excuse me, children. Right. Let's just get that yes. straight. Not just women. He did to children. And I'm not supposed to be upset with that because the victim doesn't, quote unquote, look the way you like. I have no way in my soul found can reconcile with that besides the fact that you don't love black women the way you say you do. Yeah. And, you, and our little girls. Because I have a problem with that. But Yeah, his legacy should not be more important than yes. this safe, literally the safety the safety of children and women. Exactly. Like, and you, you don't know. get to tell women how to feel after someone hurt them. Yes. You don't get to tell someone that you've been abused, but now you got to act like this. That's not the way the world goes. You're so, traumatizing them so again. So if you aren't a social worker, I don't even care. I'm going to tell you, I did a, the, um, a training on domestic violence on, oh my goodness, you can go to my website. It's uh, rs rswellness.org rs .org. on the online um go on to social work and it's clinical work with uh, domestic violence. And one of the things that I talk about is just that you don't get to dictate the response of the person who has been battered, mm -hmm. which also means that you don't get to tell them how to heal. Part of what they may need to do is express themselves. Other parts may be, I don't need to share my story. It's up to that individual. And so if 
<laughs> yeah, we're running out of time, so we have to cut it there. But yeah. ultimately, don't re-traumatize people because of your opinions, your thoughts, your perspectives, your preferences. And